Good evening, everybody. Welcome to informal webinars and this evening's topic, Reporting Essentials with Kurt Alexander. This evening's topic draws from Kurt's course with Informa, which is data analysis and data dashboard reporting. Before I hand you over to Kurt, uh, let's take you over through a certain housekeeping points that will tide you through the seminar, this webinar, and of course, uh, give you information on the link that we will be sharing with you post-webinar. So slides will be available on our slide share page and the link will be emailed to you. Recording of the web webinar will also be available to you. Uh, take time to complete the post-webinar survey that will come up at the end. You can also type your questions throughout the session. However, time will be allocated at the end of the session for Kurt to address your questions. It gives me great pleasure to introduce Kurt. Uh, Kurt Alexander has over 21 years of experience in general management, financial management, administration management, and of course, project management. He has nine years of professional business consulting and analysis experience, coupled with years of extensive finance training in Australasia and Middle East. Kurt is the director of Condamine Developments, an Australian company, and has extensive experience in a wide array of consulting and training engagements. Good evening. Hi, Kurt. Hi, and thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with Informa again here in the lovely city of Dubai. And uh, we've just completed a course this week, and now we're doing this webinar for the audience tonight. So I'd like to welcome you all here, and thank you for your participation and your attendance. And um, like we've previously said, uh, there will be a time for questions and answers at the end of this webinar. So let's let's. The, I just want to review the points that we're going to cover during this webinar. First of all. Um, There'll be three primary points that we cover in the theory and development of this course. One is it's starting at the beginning. The second, theory, design, and implementation. And third is presentation. So if we begin at the very beginning, let's take a look at what we need to do in order to uh, proceed with our reporting correctly and to international best practice standards. First of all, we have to know the end user. It's a very key important part that a lot of people overlook in doing a report because that's the way that they have produced and made that report for many years within the company and nobody has instructed them or shown them any better way to, to use the report and to, and to develop the report. It's critically important out of all the steps we're gonna go through this is the most critical point that we can look at. You have to know the end user. The end user is the one that's going to be assimilating and understanding that information. And if we develop a report that you and I can understand, but the end user does not understand, we failed at our job. So it's critically important to know the end user. I'll discuss a little bit more about this later on. Secondly, we have to know the material. We have to know and understand the material that we are promoting and producing and doing that report based on in order to have an understanding of what the variables may be and what the related materials should be, things that may not be included within our data or within our previous reports that must be and are critical to that report. The third thing is, is we have to develop the layout. So we have to then, once we have step one and two, we have to develop the layout of how that report is going to look. 
The third, the fourth thing is planning the layout. We have to now plan how that layout is going to look. The next thing is we have to discuss that layout. And the last thing in the steps of starting at the beginning is we have to produce the report. We actually have to make and then present that report as a final product. So let's have a look at each one of those steps individually. So let's have a look at the first one, which is know the end user. Like I'd said previously, this is paramount. It's critical. You have to do this. It's the key to the success of the project. You must know the end user. You have to identify the end user. You have to realize who is this report being written for? Why is this report being written? How does that end user interpret information? Do they interpret, is the report going to be a textual report that they, they read? Or is it going to be a dashboard? Or is it going to be a visual means of a report to where we have to understand how the end user assimilates that information? We have to identify the reason for the report. Why was the reason that this report was re requested? Because sometimes we may get a title of a report and the report may be very ambiguous to the actual uh, end product that is required. So we have to understand what the reason for the report is in order to be able to tailor the information with inside that report. Next, we have to identify the desired layout. Like I said previously, we have some people in senior management that have been in that position for many, many years, and they're used to looking at that same report in that same layout, in that same font, in that same color for many years, and they really don't want to change from looking at anything else. They want it just like they've always had it for the last 20 years. So we have to make sure that even though we may know better ways to display that information and to report on that information, we have to make sure that it's going to be okay with the end user to display it like that. That's why we have to identify the desired layout. Last in this topic, we have to understand the end user's comprehension and the interpretation of charts and graphs. We have some very basic concepts and ideas in international best practice for the design of charts and graphs. That's the course I've just finished teaching today here in Dubai, a week-long course of data analysis and dashboard reporting. And I had to take the students clear through how various different people interpret charts and graphs and what the general consensus and the general interpretation of charts and graph is. It's very critical to understand that section of the project. The next topic, we have to know the material. So in knowing the material, the first step is, is what industry? What industry are we actually writing this report for? Do we have knowledge of that industry? Or can we get knowledge of that industry? Because when you're reporting in a certain industry, you must be able to have a generalistic idea of that industry and the related subjects and topics from within that industry to be effective at report writing. Next, we have what form is it delivered in? So we have different mediums that we're actually producing reports in. It could be a Word document. It could be a PDF. It may be a PowerPoint presentation. It may be an Excel dashboard form. And we might have to present that Excel model dashboard during a board meeting. So we have to know what form is the end of the media going to be presented in. Next, what information is included? So we have to look and say, OK, what is the information included in this report? What was the report uh, requested for? And then what information is to be included in that? Next, we have how does the material fit together? So we look at um, 
may be gathering different sources of information from different areas and trying to culminate and pull together a final report on various different departments and we must know how that material fits together. Now, I'll, I'll just say at this point in time that we don't have to personally have that knowledge of exactly what happens in each industry, but we must be able to have access to someone who does so that we can understand and pull that information together correctly. So while we don't have to have that direct knowledge, um, we have to have access to someone who does. The next one is, what are the variances? What, what are the variances that would affect this report? If this report looks good now, what are the things that could make it look bad? What are the things that could make it look better? So we must know what the variances are. Lastly, in this topic, what is related um, to this information? Is there any external situations outside of the company or with outside of that department that should be considered in writing this report? So we must know what is related to this information. Next topic, we have developed a layout. In this one, we talk about, is this a once-off report? Is this just one time that I'm going to write this report and that's going to be the end of it and I will never have to write it again? So if this is the case, we can do it quickly and accurately as possible. Okay, We always aim for accurate accuracy, but at the same time, we don't spend a lot of time with developing what we would call a dynamic report. What we focus on is getting the end result in the quickest, fastest means possible so we can go on with other work as well as we can produce further reports if requested as well. So the second thing is, is this report to be repeated or only have slight variations each time? So if it's going to be a repetitive report or a report that will be just slightly modified each time, it's best to do it as a dynamic report that has inputs and dynamically linked workings to allow for new data and slight variations. So if we're working this report out of an Excel-based um, workbook, we can then dynamically link all of this information and put a few key assumptions in there, and we can change those key assumptions as the need rises and produce a new report the next time in a matter of seconds instead of having to rebuild a completely new report. I see this a lot in my consulting and um, training in the fact that um, I see students building the, uh, a similar report over straight from scratch instead of just modifying one single report. It's better to take and spend a little more time up front and develop a dynamic report that you can have a slight few variations put into the new one and, and build it. It may take you four or five hours to construct a report, but if, if that report is constructed then, the next report you're asked to produce may take you only five minutes. So it's much better to have that than to try to reconstruct a new report every single time. Next, we talk about planning the layout. So what is the end product? What is it that they really want as the end product? What is the reason for this end product? Okay, Where is it to be presented at? Is this in a boardroom? Is it going to be printed material? Um, who is going to be viewing this? Um, there's a lot of times we build these reports and yet we don't even test the, the medium or the location of that medium to make sure that the layout is produced and is organized and structured in a manner that it's correctly viewed at the actual presentation itself. Next we talk about organizing and cleaning of raw data. So we look at getting information in from different departments or from ERP systems and we look at cleaning that data and making sure of the integrity of that data before we use it. There's nothing worse than to um, start to produce a report only to find out the report's wrong because of some inconsistencies on the download from the ERP system. So the next thing we look at is to determine your variables and your assumptions. If you're doing a uh, multiple use report, 
you then set aside what are the variables, what are the things that can change in this report? What are the assumptions that I'm throwing in here as well? Or maybe even different scenarios, maybe a good case, bad case, worst case scenario to determine whether the outcome is going to be acceptable by the people who view this report. So determine your variables and your assumptions. Determine the method of calculations. So determine how you're going to take this through your working sheet to produce your summaries, which your summaries are then going to drive your report. So you have to determine the method of your calculations. Next and final in the planning of the layout is setting the report or the dashboard to a previous agreed layout. So whether this layout is for any one of the mediums we talked about before, whether it's a board pack that's going to be in written form, and maybe it will be in landscape instead of portrait. Maybe um, they only want certain items to be in portrait and the rest to be in landscape. You have to know the, the agreed layout, and that comes back to the very first point of knowing that end user, because that end user is going to denote exactly what you do there. The next point we have is discussing the layout. So in this section, we talk about critical steps before the presentation. Um, I find a lot of analysts and a lot of report writers um, fail in this area due to the fact that they don't take the time to um, check the layout with those closest to them or with the end user. So the first one is you, you check and discuss the layout with the team. If you're working in a team of uh, analysts or consultants in your area of reporting, you check with the team to make sure that you haven't overlooked or missed an item. If you're not working with the team, you always check with the end user. The end user is going to be the person who decides whether that layout is acceptable or not. And that's why at this stage, it's critical that we get this right before we finalize that layout and give that to them. With the end user, we can show rough drafts to ensure they're on the right path. Okay, so we can even, what I've done previously, is even do just pencil sketches of how that's going to look, what's going to be put in this square, what's going to put put in that square, is that the right order, is that the right uh, tool of actually showing this report. And what I teach my class this week is the fact of having some um, preset charts of different types. You can have pie charts and column charts and bar charts and stack columns and bubble charts and waterfall charts, different types of charts so that you can have information to throw into those and give them as an example before you complete your entire project. The next and the last thing in that is to gain insight into how they think and perceive information. By doing that and by having that conversation with the end user, you then are able to understand how they think, what they like. If we, if we look statistically at what um, some of the management have always been trained to use, that's pie charts. And you, I find that probably nine times out of ten, most of the people request pie charts. Not the best display tool to be used at all, but it's only because that's all they've been shown and that's all that they have been trained to learn how to use. So I encourage my students to take and gain the insights of what they're commonly used to seeing, show them what is a better way of viewing and why that's a better way of viewing that information in a report, and then still they are the ones to make the decision but at least you've given them the options that they never had before and no one's taken the time to show them. The next thing is, is how we produce the report. So in this section here, which is the last of section one, we look at the final review. We look at how are we going to, um, how is this looking? How is the layout looking? Is everything checked off? Is everything clear? Is the data correct? Is the data going to change? We then look at what the media is going to be used on just to make sure that in our previous steps, the media hasn't changed that it's going to be presented on. Maybe it went from a PDF and now they want to see it as a live presentation 
within the board, we have to ensure that that media hasn't been changed and we're still thinking it's going to go where we originally planned that to go. The next thing is, is to train the presenter. We have to make sure that the end user that's going to, the, to um, be presenting this material knows the material. So if we look firstly, if this is you, if you are going to be doing the presenting, make sure you have all your information compiled and you understand it all. This is a lot easier for us to do the presenting on different reports because we have been at the coalface of this report all the time and we know the data, where the data's come from, what the variations are, what the assumptions are, and how things are put together. It's a lot easier for us to present the report than someone else. But in some cases, it's not us. So if it's not you, ensure the presenter is capable of explaining and presenting the material for what the data says, not what the outcome they want. This is a critical point, is to make sure that you, as the report instigator and modeler, actually looks at is the fact that we only show what the data is showing us. Data is always right. Um, data can be uh, misinterpreted and misrepresented, but if we use our raw data cor correctly and we actually have a cleaning system of that raw data, we can ensure that we are doing exactly what the data has shown us. Um, there are times to where presenters will take that information and then turn it around or else modify it slightly just because it meets their agenda. This happens quite a lot when we talk about budgets and cash flows and forecasting. So make sure that our data is presented clear and that the end user knows exactly what that data is showing and why that data is showing that. So our second topic today is the theory, design, and implementation of reporting. So we talk about why do we do reports. We talk about what are the reasons the reports are not effective. We talk about why can data be misinterpreted. We talk about what tools do we use. We also talk about what is a dashboard report and how does it work. So if we look at each one of these individually, we now look at um, the theory, design, and implementation of proper reporting. So first of all, why do we do reports? The key, re the key reasons for producing reports are one of three different types of methods. One is operational. These reports display data that facilitate the operational side of the business. Think of an operational report as monitoring the nerve center of your operation. Operational reports often re require real-time or near real-time data. The second type is strategic or executive reports. Strategic reports will typically provide the KPIs, the key performance indicators, that a company's executive team track on a periodic whether it be daily, weekly, or monthly basis. A strategic report should provide the executive team with high-level overview of the state of the business together with the opportunities that the business faces. The last situation we look at is analytical. So the analytical reports that we produce could display operational or strategic data, one of the previous two topics. However, this type of report will offer drill-down functionality. So it will go deeper into depth, allowing the user to explore more of the data and get different insights. If we look at reasons why we um, have so much problem with interpretation of data, the problem that we majorly face is the, the problem of interpretation of the data, not the quantity or not the quality of the data. Um, statistically speaking, um, there are trillion, uh, 3.4 trillion bits of information generated in the world every single year. And statistically speaking, 80% um, 
of the actual data that the world, the entire world has gathered, we've only gathered it in the last eight years. So if we look at how fast data is growing and the different importances that we look on how much data is available to us, it's growing exponentially every single day. So make the, da the data relevant to the audience. Ensure that the data you display is relevant to the users. Okay, so we have to get the interpretation to be correct. Otherwise, we lose people from the very beginning and they just switch off. So we go into information overload. So information overload, people usually react to too much information in one of two ways. They shut down because it's too overwhelming. They don't even want to put the effort in because they think they will never achieve an outcome. Or they keep open to the flow of information and they never make a decision. So they're always trying to look and ascertain and analyze what the information is saying without making a clear decision. So the best solution for us is the middle of the road. We want to make sure that there's not a great deal of information, but it has to be precise, well-designed, and articulated information to allow the end user to make the decisions and to get on with the next thing that they want to do. When we talk about data analysis, we look at the different tools that we have in the software programs. Um, we use Microsoft um, Office and we use the Excel program to do a major amount of our data analysis. It's a strong data analysis tool that allows complete auditability and when we deal with finance um, and articulation of cash flows and budgets and uh, profit and losses, we know that we are actually providing something that can be completely auditable from start to finish. There are many other different data analysis tools out there and it depends on what your company um, requires, but it also requi it requires thinking about what is the best solution that we can use that is going to make, um, to make a report accurate and auditable and correct. So we look at what is a dashboard report. We have a picture of a dashboard report there. It's got some nice charts and a few graphs on it there. Seems really well structured and organized. But at the end of the day, a dashboard report is a high level report which shows at a glance how the company is doing. Much like the dashboard of your car, which is why some analysts try to actually replicate dashboards of cars because they think that's what a dashboard should be. So they put speedometers and barometers and everything else into the dashboard when realistically that's not what's needed for the correct interpretation of data. All we need is a precise, concise chart made that allows the end user to make a quick and effective decision. In our course, what we teach is how to interpret data on a dashboard such as the one in front of you within 20 seconds, usually within 10, but within 20. Uh, 20 seconds is my maximum rule that if I'm looking at a dashboard and I can't tell exactly what's happening with that dashboard in 20 seconds, the dashboard was incorrectly made and we need to look at reconstruction of that dashboard. Generally within 10 seconds, you should be able to create a dashboard that is informative and lets the end user decide whether there's any need to go any further with analyzing this report or not. So if we look at the key definition of a dashboard, first of all, it has to be easy to read. Okay, we, we need clear clarity of the text and clarity of the charts and the graphs and the tables. It has to be easy to read, whether you're showing it in a boardroom they have to read it at the front and they have to read it at the back. So it has to be easy to read. Usually single page and real time. We don't go over a border and that's why we like to go to the location of where the medium is going to be produced and we, we look at where this is going to be placed and we make sure that it fits correctly and properly on the display. It shows a snapshot of current status and historical trends to allow you to have benchmarks and to um, 
to see where this information and where this data is taking us shows KPIs and matrix and enables instantaneous and informed decisions to be made once again at a glance within that 20 seconds. So how does a dashboard work? Well, it uses the business units as the driver. So these business units could be anything from sales figures to production figures to KPIs to um, HR data, anything that you can gather data in, that's the driver. That's what's going to be the engine of the car. Now the information technology is the enabler. That's what is going to enable us to produce this dashboard and allows us to show this to the end user. So it's more like the outside of the car. It's the body of the car. So once again, we have the business units or the actual data as the driver and the information technology, and in our case, usually Excel as the enabler because that's what we're driving our reports out of. So if we go into presentation now, if we look at presentation, we have a few key things that we really need to look at here to ensure that we're going to be doing our presentation correctly. Um, you're all aware that, uh, most would be aware that in the world we have an optimum data collection to data reporting to data analysis um, allocation. So those three things go hand in hand and go from start to finish of how we gather the information and report on the information and we display that information. So that's data collection, data reporting, and data analysis. This also equates directly to time, money, and people. If you substitute those three data um, systems before that into time, money, and people, it equates to exactly the same ratios. And the ratio that we should be doing this in is 15% for data collection, 20% for data reporting, and 65% for data analysis. That's the correct proportion, which also equates to the same for time, money, and people in 15% for time, 20% for money, 65% for people. So if we, if we look at this, we really find that when we step into companies who are doing reporting and dashboarding, what we find is the fact that that 65% doesn't go on data analysis. It doesn't go on the actual dashboard. What it may be spent on is actually in the collection or even the reporting. But majorly, so much time is spent on the collection of that information that the data analysis at the end of it never gets completed correctly. And therefore, we end up with a problem of um, not presenting the dashboard or the report that we should because there's no time allocated for that. So the first thing is, don't be sloppy. Let your report, your report is your image and brand. So get some standardization to your reporting. Don't take and have your report be um, so um, messed up and so disorganized that no one can tell what's going on with the report. Make sure that you try and structure your report in a clear and methodical way that you can do that same presentation, that same organization of that presentation each and every time. And that's one of the biggest things that the students got out of this last week's course was the fact of how to structure and organize that report um, on a dashboard so that you can then have that same presentation either every time. So no matter who's looking at that report, they know exactly where their their portion of their their information that they want to see is located at. So location is a huge thing. So bring focus and simplify the information that you're bringing. Um, some of our data may be very long and, lo and fairly contextual. What we need to do is to bring focus to that and simplify it for every single end user. Sometimes it might be a single end user. Sometimes it may be a board where there may be 15 to 20 end users. We have to make sure that the focus is there to 
um, produce this information simply so that every single end user can understand and interpret that information. If we calibrate the data to be shown optimally, so we have a lot of data, a lot of raw data that we've collected, maybe over multiple sources. We then bring that into the workbook. We have maybe one or multiple worksheets to where we have our workings and our stripping out of certain information where we want. We have a summary tab, which we then summarize the information before we put it into a graph or a chart. And then we then bring that information into our charts and into our graphs for our final report. So we must calibrate the data to be shown optimally so that we don't have um, huge words to where we can simplify the information on the final report. It must be clear and concise and it must be shown optimally. The next thing is, is we eliminate distractions. If we make the data stand out, uh, I've seen reports with uh, brick walls as a tile on the back of the dashboard. I've seen reports that looked like a car dashboard with even the steering wheel on there to give people the idea that they're looking at a car dashboard. Um, I've seen dashboards with 30, 40 different colors. Um, I've seen dashboards that have had maybe 20, 30 charts on one single page on a dashboard. Um, you have to eliminate the distractions. That's all they are. Um, there's no room for artistic flair in doing a report or a dashboard in the business of doing proper international best practice standard reporting and dashboard manufacturing. Um, we have to eliminate all the distractions. We don't have to make it two shades of gray either. So don't get me wrong on that. We, we do put um, color coding within the actual dashboard, within the report, to make items stand out and to be easily interpreted. But we do that to bring the data out. We don't do that for a wow factor. Next thing we'll talk about is lines, bars, pies, speedometers, choose the best fit. There'll be times in your reporting to where line charts will be the best answer or bar charts or pie charts or even in some really bizarre cases you may find the need for a speedometer chart. So it's up to the analyst to use the correct tool for the correct outcome and that tool that we have available is various different options from within the Excel platform whether we're talking about charts, graphs or tables. We have to understand that um, even though the selection is there, even bubble charts, uh, waterfall charts, radar charts, um, just because the selection is there, we don't have to use it. We stick with what is going to make the data stand out. We eliminate the distractions. We bring focus and we simplify the report. The next thing we do is we consolidate the data. Be honest about your data and treat your data with the respect that's due. Okay? We, if we're bringing data from several different sources, we make sure that that data is uh, relative and is actually um, interactive with the current data that we have. So we make sure that we're honest with our data and we treat it as such. The next thing we do is we ditch the text, visualize the story. Um, a report, especially in a dashboard report, is not a, um, an electronic book. It's not an e-book. Um, it's a story that has to be told and it's to be done in a visual manner. And once again, like we said previously, at a glance. So we have to ensure that um, this report will tell the story visually before the mental side of our brains even kick in to try to assimilate the actual logic behind this. We need to make the answer visual and then back it up with the logical to allow that to be cemented in a two-fold representation of the inflow of data 
rather than just a single fold. Next, if we keep the interpretation down to under 30 seconds, like I said previously, I like to keep my rule at 20, and realistically, if we're talking about um, um, people reviewing several different reports, we really need to keep it to 10 because they're viewing so many reports that they need to make a quick and accurate decision on that report within that first 10 second period to decide whether they need to investigate it further or whether everything in that department or that area or that the, the division is going correctly and they can get on with the next report. The last one is it's not the ink, it's the think. So pay attention not to make sure that um, you focus on what is actually being written, but make sure that you give the end user the in information they need to make their assumptions and their validations on their answers logically and that they think about the situation and they have the information on that single page to be able to give you the answer. So in conclusion, I would like to thank you for your time and attention into this webinar. I greatly appreciate that you're concerned enough about your reporting skills to make the effort to get more training, so thank you very much for that. Um, it's always good to see such a large number of participants included um, in a webinar so that um, we increase our own skills. We only get better if we increase our own skills. So sometimes we think that the um, self-based training is more important than focused collective skills-based training. And um, by that, I'm saying that uh, we, we pick up bits and pieces of information where we can or from friends or from work colleagues. But really, focus collective skills-based training like I've just completed here in Dubai and I complete all over the Middle East is a huge benefit. Um, and the previous 15 students we had in the class, um, they will attest to the value of that training. So are you ready to make changes in your reporting? Are you ready to um, to be a bit more proactive and a bit more interactive with your reporting. Um, as a proactive employee and manager, you should always be ready to make changes. You should never be stagnant and keep um, your focus the same as it was last year. Your focus should reshift and should once again um, be kept up to date with what's happening in the market and with new and exciting changes in the actual arena of reporting. So once again, I'd like to thank you for your attention. We will now open up the opportunity for your questions. So if you have a questions, please submit those now. And um, I will answer those questions here in this webinar. So feel free to submit your questions. It's been a pleasure and an honor to, um, to spend this last 45 minutes with you. And we hope that you've gained lots of good things to take back to your department, back to your company, and to do that. Um, so we'll just see if we have get a few questions here. Um, one, of the, um, one of the things that come about, okay, here we have a question. Um, would, you, would I present some examples of good reports described in the webinar? Uh, I don't have any examples of a good report actively here to hurry up and throw into this webinar at this time. Um, and the primary reason why I don't is um, we, we took a final exam in the course that I finished today. Um, they were asked to construct a dashboard report out of a series of data. Now, every student had the same data but the reports that they produced were all marginally different. They followed the same standards that I had uh, and the same layout that I had wanted them and taught them during the week. But basically, if we look at even the, the previous slide we had with the dashboard with the uh, column charts at the top and the tables down at the bottom, that, that one there was not a good example because of the fact that it was too cluttered and too too compacted. 
So what we do in the week-long training course for data analysis and dashboard reporting is what we do is we tear down each aspect of that and show you on an actual um, page that you're going to be doing your report on where that primary information should be, where the secondary information should be, where your titles should be, your logos, your photos, your comments box, your uh, your secondary integers to your actual initial reporting data. We, sh we show you all that within that training course. So um, Premar, I'm sorry, we can't, um, I can't show you anything. If, if you jump on the web, um, I would suggest that you look at some of Stephen Few. Um, look at some of his work on dashboards. He is probably the foremost expert on dashboard construction and um, I have one of his books it's more like a, uh, uh, a huge storybook at it's a really big sized book but um, he um, he will have some excellent examples in there and I'm sure even on his website you'll find something there you can also look at chandu.org um, he's another person that I have a lot of high regard for in that area as well so any one of those two um, we have another question here from uh, pre presentation should be in write-up form or in a database table form. Uh, so the question is, is should the, should the um, presentation be in a write-up form or a database table form? And once again, this, um, this basically depends on your end user. Um, while we get information that could be written in either one of those two forms, um, it does depend on the end user. Um, we also teach a course um, here as well that is um, financial reporting for executive assistants, which doesn't go into the detail that data analysis and dashboard reporting does because that really drills down into Excel-based reporting the other course that we produce is called Financial Reporting for Executive Assistants because um, EAs get asked to do reports by CEOs and CFOs all the time or by board members and um, their, their type of reporting is slightly different from what we would do from an analysis point of view. So uh, your question about in a write-up or a database table form. Um, if you have data, you have to put and represent that data correctly within your report. So Tahir has actually asked that question. Um, if, if it's going to be contextual is, and full of text, well then we have to write a report like that. The, the more that we can show in a visual manner instead of a reading mental manner, the better off we are in reporting. And that's where um, dashboard has been the key buzzword around the corporate industries for probably the last five years, if not maybe just a fraction longer. And, and it's only taken till now to where people are willing to invest time and training in dashboards and in reporting because they realize that the reports that they were currently producing out in the marketplace in the companies today are ineffectual. They're, um, they're not being effective as much as what they could be. Yes, they do get the information across, but there's a lot of time taken. So in your answer, in your question about a write-up form, um, we try to stay away from doing as much writing as we can. It's more of a visual display, whether it's in a table, a chart, or a graph, we try to explain the information in a quick, clear, uh, effective manner with one of those three forms. It's a lot better to assimilate the information visually than, like I said, in a mental uh, aspect to where you read line by line. So thank you for that question um, to hear. That's much appreciated. Thank you. And thanks for uh, Primar with his um, courtesy and his, um, his manners. And he um, thanked us for the answer of that last question. So thank you very much. Are there any more questions out at this time um, that people have? Because now is your time to ask the questions and, um, and we can walk through those answers with you. 
we look at um, different types of data um, systems as well. So we look at um, whether our data is coming in uh, through our ERP systems or whether it's coming in from a previous report or whether it's come in from just a, um, a company finance statement. However that data comes in, we have to then make sure and get um, get a, um, a proper display of that information with the sources we have. So um, we have to make sure that the information that we're getting is, is relevant to the topic of the presentation and that it's valid in the fact that it's actually um, relevant for today's date, not something that's historically um, very old information that won't be relevant and if we did use it, we could be making a wrong assumptions if we used a, um, a previous um, value or a previous thought or assumption in our, in our current report, we could get a totally different answer. So um, if, we, if we make sure that we have the relevant information, it's a lot better. Um, Tahir is also asked, is, his question is, how, how we can get a video and audio presentation of this session? This will be available in about two weeks. Um, so you can take and um, then get this and it will be emailed to you. So um, this complete session along with the audio will be emailed to you within about two weeks. So give us a little bit of time to do the production side of it on this side and ensure that we do have your email addresses and we will get that emailed to you. So that's a great question to hear. Thanks very much. Excellent question. So are there any more questions or comments on this topic? We're coming to a close at the moment, so we'll see if there's one last question. If not, we'll go ahead and wrap up this session. I thank you once again for your time and your patience and your, your dedication to furthering your career and your own um, knowledge of the subject of reporting. So I thank you very much. It's a great uh, thing for an instructor like me to see people who are willing to take time out of family and the start of a weekend uh, to take and uh, attend these webinars that Informa puts on and, um, and further, further advance their skills base for themselves and for their companies and their corporations they work for. So there doesn't seem to be any more questions, so we will end this session at the moment. So thank you very much once again and thanks Informa for having me here uh, to present this topic to you and always a pleasure to be in Dubai in the Middle East. It's uh, a part of my favorite part of the world. Um, I love my time here in the Middle East and I once again thank you for attending. Thank you very much and have a great weekend.